symbol types. There are three types of symbols, but first let's cover a little bit about the point of a symbol. So if I wanted a tub, so I'll make a very simplistic 2D bathtub here. I have our exterior bit. Add a little detail. Here we go, we'll add a little drain. Yeah, lovely, right? But this is still three separate objects. We could just select all of these objects and then go to group and then they would move as one object. That's fantastic. However, there's a better way to do this. If we do a group, then that's still one instance of this object. It's just one copy of it. We'd have to copy the group over and over again. So we, our document would get larger because we have duplicates, even though it's the same thing over and over again. Symbols are a little different. If I go to modify and then create a symbol from this, we'll leave all of this the default, except we will uncheck convert to group. And I'll explain that in just a moment. We'll call this bathtub. We are, and it's asking where we want to put that. We'll put that right in this file. Now we have what's called a symbol. Now, a symbol is a collection of geometry that has a definition kept in a library, like a resource library or a favorites file in the resource manager. A symbol definition is placed as an instance in the drawing that's very efficient. It's much smaller, and we'll explain that a little more in a bit. There are various placement options when a symbol that allows you to place them as groups, or as a plugin object, or as a symbol, depending on their makeup. So if we duplicate the symbol a number of times, it's not going to make the document that much larger. For instance, if I had a document that had a group in it that was 10 megabytes, and I duplicated that group five times, it would be a 50 megabyte document at the end. This, of course, is not that large. I'm just making an example. If I used a symbol instead of that, and I had a 10 megabyte symbol, and I duplicated that five more times, that would still be 10 megabytes and then 0. 0.00005. It is a couple of bytes to make a symbol, but the size is negligible compared to how much it would be to actually duplicate the object. It's sort of like a shortcut on your desktop to a file or a folder. You make a shortcut, which looks like that file, and you double click on it and you get to it, but it's just a reference. It's just a link. Another useful part about symbols is that if I modify one of them, all of the copies of that symbol are modified as well. So I'll duplicate this symbol over here. And if I go in to double click on this symbol, I'll choose to edit the 2D component. Now these are still two copies of the same symbol. If I edit it, say I want to select this, and we'll make that a light gray. That's fine. Take the symbol, this upgrade to show the change as well. Now, what if I don't want that to happen? What if I want to be able to go up here, and you can see we have some other symbols now in this file, but we still have our bathtub symbol. If I double click on this, Anytime I go to plunk that down, it's going to use those same attributes over and over again. That's great if that's what I want, but there's more control over it. You can do something different. We'll delete a few of these copies. Actually, we'll delete all of these copies. We'll go back in here, and we'll duplicate this symbol. So we have another copy of it. Dash 2 is fine. And you can see the names of both of these symbols are black. That's a standard type of symbol. So when you insert it, it will insert a 2D or a 3D symbol. We're just working in 2D here, so you can see there's a 2 that indicates whether the symbol has 2D or 3D in it. If it's 3D, it'll have a 3 there. And then the more complicated ones may not have a number. However, we will edit this symbol. We'll edit the options for that symbol. And then in here, we'll instruct this symbol to convert itself to a group when it's inserted. Now, its name changes to blue. That's another symbol type. This symbol will insert as a group. So if I double click this symbol and plunk down a few copies, you can see in the object info palette, this is a group. If I go to edit this by double clicking on it, I can change things, but, nice little purple there, it will not affect the other instances. I can edit these as well change their attributes, and they will not affect the other instances. These are copies of the same symbol. Those are the two basic types of symbol. This is so that you can have one base that you're going to plunk down if you're going to make multiple changes to the various instances that you've placed, but you're going to make different changes to every single one. If you're going to make no changes to them and you want them all to be identical, and if you want to be able to update one of them and have every single one of them update, you would use this original type of symbol. So if we take this symbol, 
plunk this down four times. Go back to the resource manager, edit the 2D component. And if we make this yellow, it will update all of our symbols. They will keep the change the whole time. That's the difference between a black named symbol and a blue named symbol. This inserts as a symbol, this inserts as a group. Groups are individual. Now, because these were just lines, these are simple line objects that we created. We'll go ahead and delete these now. We didn't have the third option, which is insert as a plugin object. So what I'll do now is I'll go to the door tool and I'll grab a door and I'll plunk that down. If I plunk down a few doors, they work similarly to the way groups work. If I select it and go to change its color, it changes the color for that symbol, but does not change the other, I'm sorry, it changes the color for this one door, but does not change the other ones. They're independent of each other. If I don't want that, and I want them all to behave the same way, once I get, for instance, if I have this door just the way I like it, and I know I need 30 copies of this same door, I can make a symbol from this. Call it door one. And now see, this is a 2D, 3D symbol. So, if I were to make copies of this symbol, edit the 2D component, edit this door, make it blue, all the other symbols will become blue. Now, just a quick note here, even though I've just explained this to you, for a door or a window or a wall or objects that have a style ability, you would generally use their style to control it like this. You wouldn't make a symbol that places as a symbol, but there's many objects in Vectorworks that don't have styles that you might want to apply that functionality to. So that's where this becomes useful. But again, if I don't want that, in fact, I'll get rid of all these, plugin objects have another option. See how the symbol is red? That's a plugin symbol. So if I edit this symbol's symbol options, I can choose convert to plugin object. So now, when I use this symbol, it will set up with these settings, but it will plug the same symbol down again. And if I go to edit this, edit the component, change its color, it will not change any of the objects that were placed from it. But it will affect the default settings of any red symbols that I place afterwards. This is a good way of getting predefinable sets of plugin configurations. So for instance, if I had three or four doors that I knew I was going to be using in that document, I can store those as symbols, but when they insert, they insert as a door. This is important, as you know, from watching inserting doors and walls, that if you insert a symbol into a wall, it doesn't function in exactly the same way that a door or window would inserted directly into that wall. 